Greetings and love to everyone everywhere. Thank you for tuning in into the inaugural full episode of NBA Accent Podcast of us two local Lithuanian NBA basketball junkies just sharing our experiences from our addiction and all types of observations that we make throughout the weeks while watching and following the strongest basketball league on the planet, the where the stars shine the brightest and uh, where the basketball is sometimes just making you speechless and uh, really, really getting you into it. Anyway, my name is Rokas Grajauskas. Alongside with me, we have my mate Mikolas Jankaitis. Uh, we have been following NBA basketball for like eight or nine years now uh, oh. daily, or should I say nightly. Uh, and also we had like two seasons, I believe, that where we did uh, NBA broadcast games together as commentators. Well, well, n not two seasons. We had like uh, ten games. <laughs> well, yeah, but it was still at yeah, least yeah. at least a single season that we yep, that yep, we, we did had together. One really nice playoffs of uh, 2019. Yes, and uh, so yeah, uh, we have we have our own experiences, we have our own uh, points of view, and the whole idea behind this podcast is trying to create some uh, NBA related content that would be sort of orientated towards non-American audiences uh, because we as Lithuanians, I don't know if you know it or not, we are basketball crazy people. We have like elderly ladies sitting on park benches and discussing basketball games and what the hell should Jalgiris do with their coaching situation and stuff like that. So it's just natural that, that we would uh, try to delve into these unfamiliar waters. And uh, if our accent seems really triggering to you and if you get annoyed by it i can tell you right now there's a 98 percent chance that you are a pissed off local lithuanian with a lot of issues in self-evaluation because we have this thing in our national mentality everyone goes like oh my god did you hear that track you could not even tell that they are lithuanian from the way they pronounce their english words well i want people to be able to tell that i am lithuanian i am proud of being lithuanian i'm not chauvinistic in any sense I'm not prouder than I was if I was from somewhere else. But uh, that's the way we talk. That's the way our uh, speech apparatus is constructed. And that's where all the weird R-ish ch sounds come from, from our ancient Baltic language. So without any further ado, uh, after this long ass intro, we can delve into the topics that we have planned to discuss with you here tonight. And our topics include three impressive NBA rookies who all come from a European background, not only being born in Europe or having played in Europe, but especially having played in the higher levels of the European competitions and coming into the NBA after, uh, in some cases, after spending some time in the NCAA or in some, or should I say in one particular case, straight out from their national uh, championships into the National Basketball Association. So uh, this is where we begin. This is uh, our starting point of this uh, particular episode. And uh, Mikolas, do you want to take it away? Oh, yeah. I'm actually really, really happy that the, this year, uh, th th this draft had really uh, quality um, uh, rookie class uh, overall and a uh, uh, few rookies of uh, that class uh, from was from Europe and uh, they are taking off really really well so the first one is Alperen Sengun uh, nice. he's playing amazing basketball uh, maybe not amazing stats but when you play in, in Houston Rockets and nobody actually really cares, nobody actually even looks at the box score that much. But, uh, but this season, we should point it yes, out, this yes, season. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I have n nothing against uh, uh, Houston Rockets overall. I still think that 2018 Houston Rockets is one of the uh, greatest teams of all time that never won a ring. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> they, uh, I'm really ex excited about their new chapter, which I'm quite sure will be led by Alper and Shingun. Uh, not maybe as a, a flagman of the team, but as a, a like second or, or, or third banana, as uh, some uh, people would like to say. It's, uh, he's uh, showing really uh, amazing talent. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, that we Europeans love to talk about, like his basketball IQ is for real. And um, uh, of course, uh, we have an amazing video at basketnews.com uh, by uh, 
Mr. Shulauskas, he did video about uh, Alper and Shingun, which you, I think, can click somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, be sure <laughs> and, uh, to check it uh, out. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he did amazing analysis of his game, but uh, uh, what uh, I liked mm, the most was um, the foot not was is the footwork of uh, his and uh, uh, it seems that he has uh, the all the patience in the world uh, to wait till um, opposing player makes a mistake and then he makes a move so it's it's really mm, like not by his age standards the, the way he plays in the post and uh, Besides that, the thing that excites me the most is his um, passing capabilities, because the, when you have passing, big man is the best. It's uh, it's the one of the those positions that uh, doesn't have uh, usually has the, the least uh, passing uh, uh, talent, and when yeah, or you like historically has had uh, yeah, but even right now, if you would take average center, it's usually his passing capabilities are usually worse than. Uh, of course guards but uh, also the, the forwards and you still need us some kind of rim protection so you need a center like it's easier to switch uh, um like let's say it forward that cannot pass with uh, some kind of um, alternative options with centers like when you have center that can pass it's amazing asset of course uh, everybody everyone's looking at uh, the way nikola Jokic plays and creates the game um, nobody's saying that uh, Alperen Shingun will be like that, but uh, I can say that he definitely showed some promise uh, for like the way he plays. Um, because yeah, the, the easy way for the center to be like uh, good playmaking, and not clogging the paint and etc. is just to uh, have some kind of uh, distance, uh, like shot from the distance, which Shingun has, but not uh, quite displayed yet and played bunch of hands off uh, hand handoffs the way bam at the bio plays for example is a bunch of handoffs and he's uh, he's considered as a really quality playmaking center but what uh, differs uh, the good playmaking center uh, like or decent playmaking center to really really amazing uh, passing center is uh, being able to create from the top of the key when you create a mismatch, uh, you can attack uh, of the like you can attack paint uh, of the dribble, and you also can uh, pass not only uh, from the handoff, but you can pass from from the dribble. And he really displayed that quality. So, if the, the development goes correctly, and if he doesn't do Jonas Valanciunas, which uh, <laughs> which is uh, like. Uh, uh, in the dictionary of Lithuanian basketball for unnecessary bulking up and losing some speed and because his speed is really what makes his uh, uh, him unique uh, he is going to be an amazing player yeah, speed and general agility as well. And uh, you pointed out the footwork at the very beginning of your statements. So a uh, 19-year-old uh, who was selected by the 16th overall pick in this uh, past NBA draft and who already has a Turkish League MVP trophy uh, to his name. So quite an impressive resume for someone uh, so young. Yes, you mentioned the footwork and, uh, you know, the Houston Rockets had uh, Hakim Olajuwon back in the days, oh, yes. and uh, they used to call his uh, sort of, sort of uh, bailiwick, uh, his his cup of tea, uh, his post moves, the dream shake. Man, this young kid can move mountains with his the way he dances, the way he he uh, moves his pivot foot, and man. They really should start calling his moves the Alp Shake. Because, yeah, he can make mountains bounce when he starts to really, really get into the zone and do his own thing. That's really your Euro Eurocentric uh, thing of you to <laughs> say. I, I, I really love this uh, nickname. Because not a lot of uh, USA sports coverage uh, people knows. Like, uh, know about think the about Alps? the Alps. Yes, like, they, uh, no, they I know. I think they've heard they about know, the Alps. They've man. heard the, the Alps, but uh, just to make that analogy, you need to think about them, not only uh, have them in mind. So <laughs> I, I think... Uh, the uh, Alps shake, though, sounds like a milkshake with Milka or yeah, something. Yeah, the, the, uh, definitely uh, this too. I also thought that uh, how different he is from Omer Ashik. Like oh, uh, man, how the basketball changed. Yeah, it's like he's basically anti Ashik. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, we had uh, also NS Freedom, uh, also still having the NBA, uh, who was always like kind of modern center, but uh, just a really bad defense. 
and the playmaking also was not existent, but like he could dribble some when he came into the league. That was his unique uh, skill set. Uh, and he had way more strength. Uh, he had a more NBA-ready body when he was coming into the yeah, NBA. Yeah. And uh, I think that one of the reasons for that is that uh, Alperen Sengun came directly from Europe, uh, whereas NS Freedom and the player that we want to talk about next had some experiences in the NCAA, and so they were already being developed in the uh, American philosophy, if we can call it that, which is, of course, spend a lot of time in the weight room and bulk up, get the physical strength, get your body ready to be knocking around with uh, the Anthony Davises of this world. And uh, if we can move on... Uh, I just uh, wanted to say, yeah, that... Um I, I told that, uh, yeah, he doesn't need to do Valanchunas and that doesn't need to become slow, but he needs to strengthen up because right now, like, it's impossible for him to defend. He needs, like, uh, Miles Turner uh, at, the, uh, at the starting five besides him to uh, be, like, passable defensively. Like, basically, he needs uh, room protection. And if you want to have a good career as a center in the NBA, you... You would like to be the protection and not to n require protection besides yourself. So uh, I really, really hope that uh, he will find a way to strengthen up, to bulk up, uh, not becoming too slow. Yeah, and uh, the other player that we have planned uh, to discuss tonight in this episode is, of course, a guy who had the NCAA experience, who was born in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. That seemed like a fun fact when we were talking about European basketball players, but it's uh, Umer Farouk Yurtseven. Uh, at least that was... Uh, Yurtseven. Th th at th least the lady from YouTube video yeah, told, yeah, to told us that. <laughs> to imitate. I'm, I'm sure that, uh, like I can say right now, I'm sure that after a couple of years, everybody will uh, say his name correctly, uh, including us, because everybody will know it. And uh, that's that's amazing thing with... Um, foreign rookies that they uh, make the name of the, their themselves and they make they the, their name uh, yes yeah. the, their make, name being pronounced correctly make so. a name for yourself yeah make everybody learn how to pronounce your name uh, it would be extremely funny if yurt meant double in turkish uh, because double 7 and his number 77 seven, seven, that would be dope but yurt is probably deriving from the yurtas uh, the the nomadic sort of tent yeah, buildings I, I would guess so, but I'm we, really not not an expert in Turkish language. So yeah, we're definitely not uh, stating that. But uh, if uh, there's uh, Turkic uh, uh, people uh, listening to this, so we would we would really ap appreciate. Sorry uh, if you would uh, uh, explain etymology yeah. of his name. Yeah, and uh, it goes uh, the same goes with Alperen Şengün. Şengün might mean some sort of a city mayor or something. I have no idea. But hopefully, we will learn something from you, and hopefully. Uh, you will learn something from us. So, Ömer Farouk Yurtseven. Uh, in 2014 and 16, when he was aged from uh, 16 to 18, he accumulated the experience of 11 EuroLeague games uh, with Fenerbahce. And also, he even played in a preseason game against the Brooklyn Nets back in 2015, finishing with 8 points and 7 rebounds in 16 minutes while being 17 years old. Uh, later, he decided that he needed more playing time to develop his skills, and he left Fenerbahce to go uh, to study abroad, to study in the United States. And in 2016-18, he played for the North Carolina State Wolfpack, not to be confused with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Uh, and in 2019-20, after redshirting for a year, he played for Georgetown University, where he was coached by Patrick Ewing. And uh, a fun European basketball fact, he played with the son of George Mureshan, oh, whose nice. name happens to be George. Murashan and uh, yeah he played four years uh, for Georgetown not Yurtseven but Murashan did he's a uh 2 meter 06 centimeter tall small forwards and in four games he played in uh, in four years he played in 31 games 110 minutes and had an average of 
0.4 points per game. So I believe that this was the first and the last time in NBA action that we mentioned George Mureshan. Uh, also, Georgetown But University is located in Washington, D.C. And his father played for the then Bullets. So having his son also was, I think, a way of like uh, getting people to come to the games and to root for someone who you kind of know from just knowing D.C. basketball from back in the days. I really love that uh, 20 minutes into the podcast we mm, revealed ourselves as completely uh, always mentioning uh, the most random basketball yeah, players man, th imagine, that is imaginable. my problem that is uh, I mean you could go from point A to point B but I always take the scenic routes and just get all <laughs> sorts true, of uh, random George facts Murashan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah man uh, so Omer Farouk Yurtseven uh, recently became the first rookie to record at least 15 rebounds in four straight games since Shaq back in 92-93 uh, and We, when we are discussing Yurtseven, well, uh, the first impression that you get is, yes, he's a really strong rebounder, uh, reminding you of NS Freedom in that sense. And uh, he... Well, uh, he, for some reason, he doesn't remind me NS Freedom, but uh, yeah, I agree that uh, he is a strong, really strong uh, rebounder. Yeah, and uh, also, as you're watching the games, you can see that he has the potential the potential to be a very good facilitator, also playing a bit of point center role in certain situations. He has vision. He makes the right decisions with the ball when he's trying to pass it. But sometimes you see that he just lacks the technical technical skill at the current given moment. But uh, I think that developing vision is much more difficult than developing uh, your hand-eye coordination to just send the ball where you want to send it and not just making the audience see what you were trying to do, but being just unable technically to convert your own ideas into reality. Uh, so as for his weaknesses, uh, he averages just 0.92 points per possession as a pick and roll roll man, uh, which is one of the worst marks in the league. Uh, so he definitely has to show improvements in that area of his game. Uh, most of his points come from second chances or just uh, by getting the ball in like really, really short distances away from the basket, basically under the rim. And... Uh, When it comes to his stats, because he had some really impressive games against the Sacramento Kings uh, in particular and also others, uh, there is a, a slight, uh, I cannot call it a problem, but uh, a slight issue that I get with it is that uh, center, not to diminish it in any way, but center is the position where if a third string player, uh, as is the situation in Miami Heat right now, with Bam Adebayo and Dwayne Dedman both being out, Omer Yurtseven as the reserve center got promoted into the starting lineup. And center is the position where if you play a lot of minutes, if you spend a lot of minutes on the court, you are well, I cannot say more than likely, but you are likely to just gather box score numbers to get enough rebounds, to get enough points uh, for everybody to take notice. And it is, in a sense, easier than uh, to do the same as a point guard or as a small forward. Uh, and I think that we should take uh, like these incredible stats, his incredible period with just a pinch of salt that, you know, this is... This is uh, These are the circumstances that the Miami Heat are in right now, and he is definitely taking uh, taking his chance uh, using this opportunity. And already, the Miami Heat uh, fans in their forums are discussing uh, the possibility that if he continues to develop, then Ömer Yurtseven uh, will become a really nice and a really cheap, at least for next season, backup big for Bama de Bayo because the Wayne Dedman becomes a free agent after the season. And Omer Yurtseven has a non-guaranteed non-guaranteed 1.75 million dollar deal for 2022-23. So uh, with their cap situation, they are paying a lot of money to four players, uh, their highest paid players, Jimmy Butler, Kai Lowry, Bama Debayo, and Duncan Robinson. Uh, they have to find these these gems, uh, these unpolished 
sort of coaly but uh, but shiny a little bit diamonds that you have to sort of polish off and get them as these cheap players who can really make an impact towards winning. So it is a very nice find for Miami Heat. And also, Ömer Yurtseven is in a really good situation uh, at the moment for his career to prosper and for him to really develop into, into possibly a starting caliber big in the NBA. Yeah, Miami is a super a hard environment to play in, but it's really re- rewarding if you uh, earn your place in the squad. Uh, look at uh, what Duncan Robinson did from non non factor. He started playing in. He started uh, pr- playing really well, and then he took away uh, the. M- better paid uh, players uh, spots in the roster uh, Ma- Mark uh, uh, Struss uh, Max Max Struss, Struss. Uh, Sh- Sh- sorry yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's one of the names that even though he's American I always get, get my mind just goes like what? Yeah, and Struss, it's, Struss, Struss and it's Struss, always Struss, impossible Struss. to think that uh, he's a basketball player not an uh, analyst or um, the <laughs> <laughs> something yeah, else he does sound like someone that would just sit uh, at one table with Stephen A. Smith and yes, stuff yes. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. But basically, he's doing that uh, uh, the same uh, to Duncan Robinson that Duncan Robinson did to other players before, and uh, it's uh, really likely that Duncan Robinson would be the player that uh, will be traded uh, if uh, Miami w- decides to strengthen enough because uh, Struz is playing really, really well. So I'm not saying that uh, Jurt Seven uh, will take away Bama de Bio spots. Uh, Bama de Bio is one of the better centers in the league. That's not happened. <laughs> That's the not way it works. But uh, if he yeah, and I cannot. I'm sorry to interrupt just for a little bit. I cannot really imagine playing them both together. Oh no, no, not in the winning team anyway. It's like uh, b- because Bama de Bio is uh, the like the Miami Heat system is the way that like the centers uh, the. Ap- epicenter of the attack the handoffs of Bama de Bayo is really really important for the game their game and uh, it speaks a lot uh, about uh, uh, Jurtseven that he filled in in this uh, ecosystem really really well he filled in in this role of course with uh, minor tweaks uh, also really well and uh, yeah he doesn't uh, look at the baskets uh, like uh, at all uh, when he has the ball uh, a bit far farther away from it but uh, he still uh, contributes to really good play of the team and the team wins with him not less than they were winning without him so uh, it's really nice find for Miami Heat and as you were saying they are they they are gonna be deep in the luxury tax if they're not blowing up this team after a couple of uns- unsuccessful uh, playoff uh, runs and they w- they're gonna need Omer Yurt 7 and a lot of teams gonna need uh, player players like him look at the like, Utah Jazz with uh, Hassan Whiteside being their backup big it's like super bad yeah yeah with Rudy Gobert out they're just uh, like whole identity of the team yes. is gone Yes, uh, you already mentioned Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, I thought of this comparison, which uh, I just now I thought of another one that would be more relevant uh, for people watching this or listening to this. Uh, the first two players that I thought about, thinking about Shengun and Yurtseven, were uh, Valanciunas as a comparison for Yurtseven and Donatas Motiunas as a comparison for uh, Alperen Shengun. Also, as someone who had really, really a uh, uh, vast arsenal of post-up moves, uh, who even uh, had the nickname Captain Hook uh, at his peak with the Houston Rockets, and someone who was similarly built and had like similar strengths in his game uh, also had a decent passing ability and also Valanciunas as someone who could just grab rebounds be physical and uh, also later developed a, a more advanced offensive game uh, for a more relevant comparison let's take out Donatas Motiunas and put Domantas Sabonis as someone who also just plays with a lot of skill with a lot of uh, movement with a lot of uh, post-up moves with these two comparisons in mind and also just in general, uh, I know that we cannot answer this question like absolutely truthfully or uh, just absolutely uh, resoundingly legit uh, because if we could, we would be working as uh, like heads of the scouting departments for some rival NBA franchises. But I'm appreciating who, your modesty. Who do you think has a higher ceiling oh, between these two players? Definitely Shingun. Could you expand uh, on that? Yeah, uh, the key is passing. 
like I just think that his passing can take him so 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 far away, and just I, I haven't seen from Yurtseven so so much that I could see his ceiling in passing that uh, of of Shingun's. Like yeah, he contributed in that role, but I'm look at the, looking at him. I think I'm thinking that this his role just with a bigger amount uh, of minutes. Uh, uh, and uh, like a uh, more established role would be quite quite similar uh, to to hi- in his career even at his peak like a lot of rebounds a lot of points uh, um with like Clint Capella or, or something like that you know but Alper and Shingun like his passing ability his uh, one-on-one ability can change the game like not the revo- revolutionary way but just like uh, in that those 48 minutes it, it can alter it much much more and uh, i'm i'm seeing him as a uh, really great second option in the mm, starting five if everything goes well to him of course he need to look at uh, the sabonis uh, problems also like which is uh, uh, i think that alper and shingun doesn't have really uh, large wingspan at least the way it looks uh, in the I game so, yeah. i haven't seen the exact measurements of it and uh, and because it's re- really weak, he may seem smaller than he is uh, actually. So, uh, shorter, s- s- sorry, not smaller. And uh, his defense will be the deciding factor. If he will be a uh, hole in the defense, yeah, then then he might become just like a role player, the uh, sixth man or something like that. But uh, I, I'm just counting those players much more valuable and chance of those players becoming something is much more important than uh, having really uh, decent center, which your seven might be. Alperin Shingun actually has a positive wingspan. Uh, that means his wingspan is uh, longer than his height. Uh, yeah. He's listed as 6'9 uh, when it comes to height and uh, 705. I ah, know we don't measure like dick size and Fahrenheit, as as uh, one rapper once said, but 705 is more than 6'9", that's, that's what I know for sure. Uh, so, yeah, we have, uh, after discussing the, the Turkish uh, NBA rookies, we can move on to, to a place that actually has a certain uh, connection with Turkey as well, because uh, the next player that we want to put our focus on uh, comes from the city, which is... Uh, said to be the birthplace of Doner Kebab. So <laughs> the association that a lot of us get with Turkey uh, actually comes from Berlin, uh, from where Franz Wagner uh, started his basketball journey, where he played in Alba Berlin and also later went to the NCAA, uh, played for Michigan State. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know that both of us uh, want to discuss this player because he he actually made a huge i cannot even say a huge leap but he is one of the rookies that are definitely exceeding expectations right now uh he is the best rookie on the orlando magic team even though they had the fifth pick and picked is up he the Sons. best player in the orlando, uh, orlando magic right now uh, i would uh, say that the discussion between him and cole anthony as as impactful players especially on the offensive end uh, is is well, there might be a discussion, so that is already a compliment to the rookie. And uh, when it comes to just all-around game, it's pretty hard to to uh, sort of uh, evaluate the players of the Orlando Magic because of the surroundings and the circumstances that they are in. Uh, the team is not playing to win right now. They are gladly uh, piling up the losses uh, and increasing Finally. their chances for a good uh, pick in the upcoming draft. I could not agree more with you when you say Finally, yeah, they actually did good. Uh, they they extended the uh, the contracts of their uh, p- yeah president and GM just now in in the past few days. They have uh, six upcoming first round picks in the next four drafts. They have uh, good young players with both rookies Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs, and also the sophomore Cole Anthony, and also the young centers Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter. They have a lot of a lot of developmental pieces, uh, but and they have. This enough injuries so those uh, uh, developmental pieces to, would get enough playing time. Yeah, yeah, they still are waiting for Jonathan Isaac, still are waiting for Markel Fultz. Uh, Jonathan so Isaac tore his ACL like at the beginning of last year. 
didn't he like calendar like last year season, or this season? season. Yeah, and he's like still nowhere to be seen. It's like uh, he, of course, it's like not the same circumstances as uh, Zion, but it's it's really query also for me. Yeah, it is kind of weird. Uh, so. Focusing on Franz Wagner, uh, we have a player who's listed as uh, 206 or 610 for you American viewers. I don't believe we have any American viewers. Do the, the British also measure height in feet and inches? I believe they yep, do because yep, it's the yep, imperial yep. system, so it must have come from the, the I, center I of the empire. I remember when a uh, completely drunk uh, British guy at the kebab uh, shop uh, uh, looked at me and was like, you... You do you play rugby? So, no, you should play rugby. You're super tall. You like se seven feet or something like that. Okay, <laughs> I was so like, that's, <laughs> that is that's how I remember. That is proof. Yeah, yeah. Thank God he didn't ask you if you played cricket. <laughs> I wonder how should you look like for a random British person to say you should play cricket. Like you, you look like you wouldn't get bored by standing <laughs> three days in the field and shit. Uh, anyway, Franz Wagner. Uh, Played in the Euro Cup in 2018-19, played in 22 games for Alba Berlin. Uh, he uh, already mentioned his height and uh, he also has a 7 feet wingspan. Uh, he's a tall player, but he has really good, uh, a tight handle. I cannot Amazing. say that he has, he has good dribble moves. It doesn't seem when you are watching him that he has a lot of like these uh, herky-jerky crossovers and stuff like that, but he has really good base control he really feels the rhythm and it's really he really hard to keeps take a the ball, ball yeah him, really yeah. tight to him so yeah that's one of his strengths uh, that i was able to notice also he is an incredible finisher around the rim and he is absolutely ambidextrous he actually prefers to finish his uh, like dribble moves with his left hand when he shoots from the outside with his right hand so when it comes to finishing through contact under the rim, he can go both ways. He can go left, he can go right. He's uh, pretty versatile in that sense. Uh, also, he has quite a decent defensive potential. Uh, in his final year in Michigan, he averaged one and a half steals and 1.2 blocks. Uh, so, good potential there. And he He's doesn't look like, like a really negative uh, player on the defensive end out there on a nightly basis. Yeah, he often guards the best uh, players of the, like the best wing players of the opposing team. And He's definitely not worse than any other Magic players, uh, but that's that that's not saying a lot. But yeah, uh, the, the bar is not that I high. Be yeah, I believe that if Isaac comes back uh, someday, like he, <laughs> him, uh, Ca Carter Jr. or Mo Bamba uh, can make uh, Magic really like solid defensive squad. Even even right now, of course, uh, Cole Anthony is not amazing uh, defensively but uh, neither most guards are and uh, most young guards i think yeah most young guards and uh, but uh, i really love this player i'm honestly started to, i only watched orlando magic because of ignas brasdakis and we were expecting in the beginning maybe he will get the chance and um, he got the chance but he was unable to seize the opportunity and who seized the opportunity was franz wagner of course he w was gonna get his minutes anyway but uh, everyone like uh, at the beginning of the season at least uh, from my uh, circle of knowledge were expecting him like well he can become a really solid role player it's like stereotypical thinking about the white uh, tall european, european players, players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, non-athletic uh, sound fundamentals and actually the description does kind of fit alper and shingun but uh, the stereotype gets a bit broken by franz wagner yeah because he's really strong even right now the way he uh, um gets uh, his foul shots is amazing like his foul rate is really high for for this uh, this type of player th being this young and uh, it's actually the skill that translates really well going forward uh, for example Trey Young was drawing falls instantly and he's one of the best guards in the game right now uh, and uh, I'm expecting big things uh, from Franz Wagner I I'm, I'm thinking he's the most valuable asset of the team right now uh, of course, we cannot judge Jalen uh, Suggs by the half of the season, but the, what uh, Franz Wagner proved, uh, like if Magic would have taken him fourth and uh, uh, Jalen Suggs would have uh, 
was taken by uh, other teams. Sorry for my uh, stuttering. Uh, nobody would be a word. Yeah. In December, France played in 14 games and averaged 19.5 points, 5.1 rebounds and 3.1 assists while shooting 48% from the field, 40% from three and 89% from the free throw line to the tune of 0.579 true shooting percentage and also nearly 24% of usage uh, behind only Cole Anthony on the team. That's a high number for... Uh, legit second option uh, on on any team. Uh, in that list, he was above Desmond Bain and uh, Jonas Valanciunas and only slightly below Anthony Davis. So, yeah, I mean, he gets a lot of chances to, to create uh, either for himself or for his teammates. And, uh, yeah, he's just a player that, you know... The Orlando Magic have uh, picked up like Mario Hezonia in the past years and also uh, not Orlando Magic, but Dragon Bender as a comparison comes to mind just from uh, a European player drafted in the top 10 and uh, coming into the league with high expectations and just flopping completely. Uh, that's why I think that me personally, I I was looking at Franz Wagner like, well, okay, yeah, like he might be decent. I, if it will work out, he might be decent if not he will i don't know follow paul zipser and uh, just go back to germany in a few years but that doesn't look to be the case right now franz wagner is seriously impressive uh if the season ended today i believe he is a lock to make the all rookie first team uh as one of the five most impactful rookies of the season uh and uh, the orlando magic really have uh, have found themselves uh not not necessarily a cornerstone, but a building block for the future. And uh, they really can, can if they can accommodate him, if they can sort of uh, accelerate his development, they might have a really, really good player and a really good player for a le- really long time wearing the Orlando Magic jersey. Uh, I, I also really love that uh, he's... Uh, like seems to be really really smart he knows that the best shot is corner free or the shot from under the basket uh, he never uh, oh, the analytic mind yeah yeah he never uh, shoots from the mid range which like he plays that looks like yeah he should shoot from a mid mid range and i no, th- i'm quite sure that he will add this uh, eventually because it's a useful skill to get, have best players in the game has that have that shot in their arsenal but right now he's not the best player in the game and he's just being super super efficient and super effective i love that yeah that also might be uh, um an effect of the system that Jamal Mosley yes. is is implementing yes, yes, in sure. Orlando is just instructions of not taking mid range shots. But the way, like he uh, somebody else uh, takes a shot, you know, and uh, then he runs uh, to get the rebound. He somebody else gets the rebound and he runs straight back to the corner. He knows that it's the best place to be, and yeah. when and he's a really good cutter. Uh, yes, without yes, the ball, yes. he's just his cuts are incredible. Like uh, a, a few weeks ago, I believe, he had made every single shot that he had uh, attempted after cutting uh, off the ball, receiving the pass, and just finishing the move. Every single shot for a, for a, basically a kid who's just um, just making his first steps in the NBA. That is a really impressive achievement, and. Um, yeah, uh, one thing that also really uh, left a big impression on me when it comes to Franz Wagner, I don't know how to really mm, formulate this, but he has a very good court vision when it comes to reading the body language of the opponent. Like he just sees, you know, like if if you are if your weight is on your left leg, he will be able to just instantly sort of understand that and get into the spot that you won't be able to reach because of the way your body is positioned. You cannot call it just court vision in general. It doesn't affect his passing, but the way he reads the body language of the opponents, the way he can dance across the lane when he's dribbling, uh, like the Euro step on Yanis, which was impressive in itself and also he dropped 38 on the milwaukee bucks the full uh, roster milwaukee bucks not some scrubs playing because of covid but they had middleton they had yanis they had basically their entire team well except for brooke lopez and franz wagner dropped 38 on them yeah he's fearless they like yanis is 
probably besides Rudy Gobert the best rim protector in the league right now. I would at say least yeah. one of, and he goes at him full speed. Like he goes at Yanis the way Yanis goes at people, and he doesn't have its that strength. He just makes really good uh, uh, like positions his body really well at at the basket and uh, makes a really decent shot. I'm as I speaking. I'm getting more and more excited about this player, which was, during the draft, he seemed like one of the most unexciting prospects, like the just Franz Wagner. Generic. Yeah, like g- generic name, European looks, uh, nobody is interesting about him. And I, I love the way he made me uh, a bit crazy about uh, Orlando Magic. Wow. It's, uh, this season is super weird. And, uh, of course, I would wish I, I have uh, strength and time to watch every team playing, but uh, sometimes you just need to pick pick those cherries. Yeah, and, sometimes uh, you just... Well, it's such a pity, but sometimes you just have to sleep. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, one of the one of the worst uh, qualities of life. Uh, also, one last thing that I really, really would like to mention about Franz Wagner. This is not even basketball related uh, in a in a sense, but his Twitter handle. This is, comes from Basketball Reference. Uh, th- his Twitter handle is Franz Boogie, but his Instagram is Franz underscore Weasley. Now, if the Wagner brothers identify themselves with the Weasley brothers from Harry Potter, I love them even more than I did before. Because they do look like they could identify themselves with the Weasley brothers, who are not the most badass characters on the planet, but that's just just a, a beautiful possibility that really came across my mind. And if, if I was working for the Orlando Magic, I would definitely start selling merchandise with the logo of Wagner Brothers. You know, like just like Warner Bros, but Wagner Brothers. Mo, Wagner Bros. Mo uh, Wagner needs to become just a bit better for that. Well, like, well he's he, not at level of Antetokounmpo brothers, but you know. Uh, well, he 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 can stand up to Tanasis. I mean, it's no, just that, I that mean, it's Franz not Wagner is the, not as uh, good uh, as Yanis. Uh, uh, I mean, the difference between uh, Franz and Mo uh, is not as significant as between Yanis and other uh, like Tanasis, uh, but it's still. It's already quite quite a uh, big big difference, you know. It's not Gazal brothers or, or, yeah, or yeah. something like Mo that. Mo said that uh, I was happy that the Orlando Magic drafted Franz because I wouldn't like to play against him because I know how good he is. Uh, so yeah, I mean, brothers. They I, I really want just that Mo uh, would make uh, that uh, unexpected leap in the next season that some th- like Hedo Turkoglu made uh, for Orlando Magic. Uh, Ten years ago or twelve, even more, even more. They played in the it finals in two thousand nine. Yeah, so he was rookie he of the year. Uh, around no, he that. was the most improved. Yeah, 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 rookie not of rookie of the year. year. Yeah. Sorry, most most improved. Yeah. Let's just uh, check to to make sure that we are not giving you any misinformation. One more thing that I wanted to check uh, to double check because I might have, might have uh, no. That is uh, correct. And for the most improved player, Hedo Turkolu won it in 2007-2008. So yes. it was 14 years ago. Time flies, my God, it's insane. Especially when it comes to NBA. Man, it seems like, yeah, it seems like Clay Thompson got injured really long time ago. But at the same time, it feels like, what, it was just a few months ago. And, you know, it's just surreal the way it sort of interjects with reality and the way you can sort of uh, go back to certain moments and get them in parallel with what's been going on in your life uh, during that time. So, yeah, NBA is the best, the best TV series ever made. Man, you don't need no Netflix. You don't need no, I don't even know where people watch that also hulu or some stuff you don't need any of that if you've got the nba you've got like 500 characters in a single tv show all interacting with each other and all creating these wonderful wonderful spectacles these theater shows where people just practice to to make the show as good as it gets but they get to go against other players who also practice 
for the same thing and it's just brilliant i mean nothing is ever the get, same and or sometimes you just get shit reality tv that's called ben simmons and philadelphia or, well yeah or, you, you know, or you, kyrie irving there is the cetera. kardashian sides to to there's, every story there's stuff for ev- uh, for everyone and you were talking about the moments uh, of uh, uh significance and one moment of significance uh, happened for Domanta Sabonis uh, a few days ago he re- re- recorded his career high in points and, and a sim- Lithuanian high in the NBA now for all of you foreign viewers before we go forward we have a question for you Domanta Sabonis dropped 42 points and become the highest scoring Lithuanian in a single game in NBA history who was the record holder up until that performance you can pause this video if you want to think for a little longer but 41 points were scored by Linus Klaser playing for the Denver Nuggets Again. in the same game where Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson were his teammates but Linus Klaser dropped 41 yes against the Utah Jazz as well just the same as Domantas Sabonis dropped 42 against the Utah Jazz a few nights ago i guess we have a thing against the Utah Jazz yeah 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 for But some reason maybe we don't like jazz or, or maybe, maybe Rudy Gobert doesn't like jazz so or maybe we don't like them. Mormons <laughs> or maybe we don't like Rudy Gobert that's also uh, a possibility but uh, Like just a side note, I I remember Linus Clay's uh, scoring 41 points was much bigger deal in Lithuania than uh, Domantas Sabonis uh, scoring 42. It was everywhere. Like it, yeah. it was on on just regular regular TV. It's I've seen those highlights like 40 times. I'm not even exaggerating. And uh when it comes to 42 by Domas, yeah, I saw it live, but I don't know, maybe I will watch it like two or three more times in my life i don't believe that that it will leave such an imprint on my memory the way uh linus clays is 41 or yeah. jonas valanciunas 39 by the 36. way 36 36 yeah, 36 yeah, yeah. i believe it was against the houston rockets no in the overtime no, against game. Uh, lake clippers the season when he scored oh, a bunch the of seven three yeah, 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 yeah 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 but he also had that really really slick game against the houston rockets his first year in memphis uh where he just went toe to toe against james harden forced an overtime and then won the game for memphis in overtime maybe it was 34 33 32 but above 30 and an incredible performance uh when you take a look at like the rest of the game and what those points meant uh in in the context of uh, of the match itself Uh, and despite this uh, career highlight this season for uh, Domantas Sabonis is uh, really weird in Indiana um before this week he had uh, lowest usage in any year besides his uh, rookie year at Oklahoma right now because uh, a lot of players that don't cannot play for Indiana Domantas Sabonis uh, uh, exceeded uh, his usage uh, average exceeded the first season in Indiana but it's still like a three percentage uh, points lower than Uh, previous season for example so that's uh, due to new coach Rick Carlisle uh, and uh, also his uh, efficiency rating and uh, his true shooting percentages are higher than in any other season before <laughs> so despite having lo- or maybe because of having lower usage he is yeah. scoring ball mo- more efficiently and those 42 points would have uh, would not have been impossible without uh, two players one wouldn't of them wouldn't have been possible that's a double negative but yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm sorry to interrupt that no 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 just it, the way just, my brain is wired yeah yeah, yeah. and um, it uh, he, like he wouldn't have done that before uh, Without? without Hassan Whiteside, of course. <laughs> uh, he really helped. And uh, if we're not joking, then without Lance Stevenson. Absolutely, man. Lance Stevenson, my God. I've been following the paces ever since Domas got traded there. And uh, it's been a, a, a few well kind of dull years uh, except for uh, the year where they uh, went to seven games against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers i believe it was 2018 if i'm not mistaken that was a wonderful series and they had Lance Stevenson on the team back then and he was he was out of the league for two years and nobody signed him nobody wanted him and then the first time he comes back 
to the I think it's called what the hell is it called now? Field house, the something field. House. It was the Bankers Life Field House. Now it's the something something field house. Well, the Indiana Pacers home arena. The first quarter. The first quarter, the man dropped 20 That's on incredible. the Brooklyn Nets. That was, I was just shouting at my screen, thank God I live alone now, because, uh, you know, basketball games usually start at 2 a.m. Uh, here in Lithuania and finish at around 8 a.m. So if you are shouting a lot, well, your roommates would not appreciate that. But now I can shout however I want. And oh my God, did I shout when Lance was pouring it in against Brooklyn and in the very next game. A career high, 14 assists, and of those 14, 10 went to Domantas Sabonis. Yeah, he, and Domantas like scored what 18 buckets uh, out of uh, 22. Uh, it, it was uh, super ah, yeah, efficient yeah, yeah. Be because he uh, didn't so, yeah. need to create much. Uh, Lance did uh, everything for him. That's not diminishing uh, Domantas' uh, input. It's just like really, really nice connection. And I remember how um, at uh, Domantas' de debut season in the Indiana Pacers when we didn't know how the things will work out for him. I remember uh, being concerned yeah, that, at that first he <laughs> has to, you know, he will have to um, like battle for playing time with Kevin Serafin. Kevin Serafin <laughs> and that other... Um, uh, T.G. Leaf. Yeah, T.G. Leaf <laughs> uh, the, in Indiana homegrown uh, player, but uh, I'm not uh, talking about this. I I'm talking about the first uh, um, your article in uh, Delphi about uh, uh, his connection with uh, Lance Stevenson. How amazing they're working together, and yes, Lance Stevenson for Indiana Pacers. The the, the it's like a RPG animal for the character. That's like worthless without team. Uh, and uh, like without uh, the main character, uh, Indiana Pacers being the main character, and but team also uh, the character becomes much much stronger when they have a dog or or the other animal around. So because like Lance Stevenson cannot play basketball in any other place. Yes, and Indiana is playing boring basketball without Lance Stevenson. Absolutely Until right. Until Lance Stevenson cannot walk anymore, I don't want to see him in any other yes, team. Yes, yes. They made the same mistake twice by simply letting him go. Yeah, it was 2018. He signed a, a huge uh, value uh, financially deal with the Charlotte Hornets. So the bases just didn't want to pay him. But you cannot let the man go. The man is the soul and the spirit of the Indiana Pacers. He's just, he's the team captain without even him being named team uh, he, captain he he's immediately so influential the most uh, interesting thing about yes, the Pacers yes. like they released uh, they the very the first shot he uh, hit he already played the air guitar while <laughs> running back on defense that's it and th that team just lacks charisma so much they don't have any charismatic yeah, players they leak everybody the sort of crumbles under pressure because nobody everybody just keeps on looking away uh, like whom should I give the ball to whom because nobody wants to take initiative and also nobody wants to take the ball with Lance Stevenson you have that solved just give him the ball yeah he will not make perfect decisions every time he's on the floor but he is he's just an incredible sighting he's just such a fun player to watch when he's playing for the paces and especially when he's playing in Indianapolis and that is how we are discussing the 42 points of Domantas Sabonis by just giving shout outs to Lance Stevenson for five minutes straight yeah, and um, uh, what I wanted to say that, yes, Lance Stevenson is like a chili powder to really blend uh, meal, uh, and he really makes the uh, Pacers interesting. But really? the salt in the I soup, also yeah. thought that Domantas Sabonis, has he ever played with better playmaker than Lance Stevenson? I remember when they signed Michael, Malcolm Brogdon, we thought that, oh my God, their pick and rolls with Domantas will be but amazing. Malcolm but Brogdon is been. not... a. Uh, uh, not even a uh, really good playmaker. He's decent. But uh, that got me thinking that if Lance Stevenson makes uh, Domantas Sabonis uh, this much better or more uh, like his game, yeah, efficient and easier, imagine how he would look with elite playmaker. And then it got me thinking and on the same day, John Collins uh, like uh, leaked information that he's uh, frustrated. Why I'm saying John Collins? Because mm, Shams oh, never tweet you, anything. Oh, oh, never tweets. Uh, yeah, okay, he, okay. he he never tweet. Uh, like Woj and Shams never tweet anything without uh, consent of uh, players' agents because they have to ma maintain good relationship with them. So 
and I it got me thinking. Forget about yes. the fit with Capella yes. and etc. But just the pick and roll of Domantas Sabonis with Trey Young, man, that would be a straight up like top five offense in the league. Like the just Atlanta Hawks, I believe, have the second most efficient offense in the league as it is. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I I hear your point. And uh, before we started uh, this whole episode, you told me that yeah, you have a trade idea for Domantas Sabonis, and I was thinking like, where are you going to trade him? And now with this. Really, really nice build up. I get you, and uh, yeah, that would be awesome to see Domantas with Trey Young. I'm in I'm regular season, up, uh, in 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 regular season, I think it would be. Uh, at they could be the at the similar quality as those uh, six uh, Budenholzer Hawks was like six sixty win uh, sixty win team because I I'm just thinking that uh, Trey Young is that good. And uh, Domanta Sabonis is also like amazing player for certain type of basketball. Of course, when we, you go to playoffs, then you run into yeah. the issue of uh, not having a decent rim protector. There's also one more thing. They would be amazing on pick and roll on offense. But if you put them on pick and roll on defense. But wha- who are their coach? Nick McMillan. He's oh, he amazing knows, defense. He knows how to optimize Domantas, yes. And he knows how to Man. optimize defense o- of overall. Man, so give us the trade idea. No, you have, it, you was, have it was the idea was just a trade ah, destination. Just, just to see just okay, to, okay. The, the details don't matter that much because when you if you send something for... Uh, mm, of course, John Collins is uh, the main guy, but uh, his contract is much, much la- larger. So I, I don't even... Maybe it's Clint Capella and some uh, picks or uh, because like Clint Capella really has a down year, I would say. And uh, I expected more of him in, in the season. And uh, I, I'm just thinking for this trade to work, like not this trade, but this idea to work, Domantas Sabonis to the Hawks. Uh, Hawks would need to rebuild a lot. They would still need like some kind of forwards that could help. Uh, like They would need to become a bit more like Toronto Raptors, which w- would be another really interesting trade idea. For example, Siakam to, uh, for Sabonis, uh, because uh, OG Ananobi and Scotty Barnes would be really amazing at the defense event to, to help to mask uh, Domas' deficiencies. Yeah, and his playmaking yeah, would, would really suit them yeah that's also a fun idea uh, uh, and uh, I but that's uh, like Toronto that was, doesn't matter I just want to see uh, for one season at his prime Domantas Sabonis with elite playmaker if it's not uh, Atlanta Hawks then just uh, get him to um, uh, Dallas Mavericks and make it all European team <laughs> just send, send like Maxi Kleber, uh, Kristaps Porzingis, uh, uh, Domantas Sabonis, and uh, Luka Doncic, and add another like anyone. Just make it all European team, and uh, I believe it actually would work really well if uh, uh, Hardaway Junior uh, became f- European. <laughs> no, no, it b- became <laughs> interesting for Indiana Pacers, and somehow they would arrange oh, okay. the deal. But of course, it won't happen because at least sources uh, like. Sources say to the guys that uh, deliver sources to us, uh, uh, he, they say that uh, Indiana Pacers uh, values uh, Domantas Sabonis really, really high, maybe rightfully or maybe not so. Uh, so the trade to Mavericks is m- impossible probably. And to tr- trade to Hawks is unlikely also because... Uh, as good player as he is, he has really good deficiency, uh, really um, explicit, uh, not explicit, sorry, ex- uh, clear the, the deficiencies, and uh, a lot no teams will want to give away like uh, two first round picks and a young asset for him, yeah. which I believe Indiana Pacers is asking. Yeah, some some teams sort of might, but uh, no, Domantas Sabonis is not, even though he is an all star. Technically, uh, he's not like the all-star player that you would uh, push all of your chips in for. Uh, so, yeah, it's w- we have discussed possible trades of Domantas on our uh, Lithuanian uh, podcast. And it's really hard to find a team that where he would fit without moving other pieces of the team to make it work. Just as you said with, uh, like, yeah, John Collins, if, if that was possible, theoretically. Then you have Clint Capella and Domantas Sabonis. No, no, mm. then you need a sign. Away yes, Capello. exactly. Uh, Portland could sort of make a trade, but then they would have to trade Nurkic somewhere because in the 
Indiana would have no need for Yusuf Nurkic. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of questions and a lot of a lot of uh, just hurdles that you have to clear uh, to to make a legit Domanta Sabonis trade package, uh, even in theory. Then get him to Memphis Grizz- Grizzlies. I don't know if uh, Jamaran is actually elite playmaker. He's elite player, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if he's that block man, I'm so happy that <laughs> you haven't watched that highlight before I called to you yesterday, and I I was just like so happy to hear that live reaction. It's I I think the uh, listeners to this podcast know that uh, what we're talking about. Uh, I I I'm thinking that it's almost the same level as the dunk of Wins Carter that you know what uh, yeah, we were talking yeah, yeah. about that block of uh, uh LeBron LeBron yeah but LeBron is uh, n- known uh, of uh, significance not not of how spectacular athletically it was it, it was yeah, spectacular, it was spectacular but it was nothing nothing compared athletically with uh, Jamaran's block it was wow yeah indeed it was and uh, I honestly hope uh, that even if this inaugural episode wasn't wow for our audiences i hope that uh, you know that we have gained some interest with it and uh, we hope that the interest will be budding and building up uh, throughout the days the weeks the months the years possibly and uh, yeah that's that's what we had to share with you this time and uh, it's uh, so very symbolic that we opened up the podcast with the intro of bob talking about Ja, and we finished with Mikolas talking about the other Ja, the Ja yeah. from Memphis <laughs> Grizzlies. So, a crazy shout out to everyone listening or watching. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in once again. Please leave your comments, your replies, your reactions, and your etymological uh, discoveries in the comments. Uh, as always, uh, a crazy big up to Basket News for uh, letting these two basketball junkies just do whatever they want in their studio. So, in any way, language they want <laughs> uh, yeah uh, the next one is in russian <laughs> no no we won't make a russian one but On we hope that maybe you with russian accent maybe with russian accent <laughs> okay, but we hope that. <laughs> that you will be a russian to tune in into the next episode uh, <laughs> so thank you very much and yeah see you next time big up